Hi Sewing Friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles and today I have a free PDF pattern make to show you. Now um, I've told you I was going to make a free PDF pattern every month and I have so many of them. I mean I've been collecting them for a while. And um, I chose one that I had wanted to make uh, probably for two years now uh, and on the website of AngelaKane.com uh, I think you can sign up for a trial. I, I can't really remember the details of how I managed to get this pattern for free, but you can still get it for free. Only in my case, I was able to get it for free in the large size, which as it specifies there is drafted for a size 18 to 20 UK. So that is slightly larger to my size, but I don't really mind. I'm still going to use the pattern. <laughs> So I have filmed all the process of um, what I'm going to do to this to make it different because it is a very simple uh, tank top, you know, just sleeveless, bust that, nothing else. There's just nothing different or special with the top other than, than it being a top, you know. <laughs> so I wanted to do a hack. Um, it, it, was a, it was a creative process while I was sort of thinking and modifying some things first, uh, I came up with what I was going to do. So I have filmed everything and I hope you enjoy watching it. So have a look at all of this. Um, in this top, the front bit, there is a ladder there. I'll just show you there. Now if you go and measure this dart, the depth of the dart is only two and a half centimeters. And that is more suited for an A or B cup. In my case, I need at least four to five centimeter depth in a dart here, because that is the difference. Like if I measure myself from here, from my shoulder seam down to my natural waist, there is a four centimeter difference from my front and my back, which means that if I want to have my, uh, my tops um, match the front and the back evenly all the way around and also have the bust shaping I have to add here on the side that amount four to five centimeters so because I already know this from pattern drafting I'm not even going to bother to make a 12 because I know this is not going to fit the other thing is this dart seems too high now my, my bust height is uh, 32 centimeters so if I measure myself from here from the shoulder down to the highest part of my bust. Now I am not counting that seam allowance, so I'm not taking into account five eighths or an inch or one and a half centimeters. My bust height would be here, where I'm marking um, a pink dot. So it's a good, um, let me see. Yeah, two and a half centimeters lower than that. Now I think this dart is also too long, I just, it just seems like it's going to reach my apex if I keep it that length, so I'm going to go ahead and measure that, yeah, see from if I measure from nipple to nipple, my measurement is um, 24 centimeters, so if I divide that by 2, I have 12, so it's exactly, it would, I mean, the, the point of this dart would match exactly my nipple and I don't want that. So I would shorten the dart by at least two centimeters. So from that point there, I am bringing, bringing it in two centimeters. So now I'm going to make another new dart in pink, uh, taking into account the depth that I want and that new point there where the dart is gonna finish. So in pink is my new dart, that black original dart does not exist anymore and now I have to compensate for, um, because I added one and a half centimeters to the depth, I have to add on at the bottom one and a half centimeters. The other change I'm going to make is the neckline, I just think it's way too high for my, for my personal um, taste. So I'm just going to freehand. you have a French curve go ahead I don't have one so how did I get to that length there and basically if 
if I take my tape measure and measure here from, from that shoulder seam there, not considering the seam allowance of course, and measure down, my, uh, my neckline will have a depth of 18 centimeters. So if I go ahead and um, place that on myself, like this. So I measure from the base of my neck down 18 centimeters is right there. That means that the neckline will hit right there where it's low enough, but I'm not actually showing anything. So um, that is the length that I want it to be. So I've already marked it, now I'm just gonna cut it out. And um, you see, I've also lost some part of the shoulder width when I did that. So I'll be uh, sure to adjust the back pattern piece to match that shoulder width as well. I'm just gonna put these um, shoulder seams together there. And you can see how much I've got an excess here because I, I chopped off some of the width when I altered the, the neckline in the front. So this means I'm going to change the back neckline as well. And you know, I'm just gonna freehand it as well. There. So there is my new neckline for the back. So now I've got to think about the hack I want to do in the back because I, I just I don't want just a normal sleeveless crop top. I want something really cool on the back. So I'm going to think about that and then I'll be right back and tell you what I'm going to do. Um, on my Pinterest, um, I have a board. Well, I have loads of boards, but there's one just called Sewing Ideas and it's just random things that I see and I save and I had a look there and um, I found this anthropology top. Um, I don't know, it's a couple years old, but I don't care because I don't do trends, but look at that back. So they've made this with a, like a stripey fabric to have the contrast in the stripes. I'm not, I'm not interested in that. I'm just interested in the shape there at the back. So you can see there's like a V, a V piece and then another piece that comes from there. So I've um, recreated that on my pattern piece here. So this is the back, this is the center, the center of the thing. And to determine the depth of that opening at the back, you know how you can't see her bra at the back? So I measured myself from the base of my neck down to where my bra is, and that's 27 centimeters. So I've made this 25, so it's higher than my, than my bra. You, know, you never want to see a strap there. So from, the, from there, I measure down 25 and that is where I put the point there and then um, you know on the back arm side that V finishes there sort of below the shoulder so just eyeballing it I drew a line there that you can see and then to have that little opening there um, I'm just eyeballing a few centimeters away from the center and then towards the center fold. And I'm not doing it as wide as the center fold, um, half a centimeter before to give room for that little, for that little strap that is gonna tie up there. So, pattern pieces. Uh, that'll be one pattern piece, that'll be another one and this won't exist because that will actually be my skin there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and mark grain lines and um, yeah, my new back pattern piece, will, which will consist of two pieces. Um, I will do a facing here for this V part so that this can come out of there. The other pattern pieces for my crop top with a back detail. So that is the front piece uh, cut on the fold. Uh, I've already marked the darts there. And that is the facing. And this, this is the back uh, part. Um, I couldn't cut it on the fold, so I'm going to have a seam there, but that doesn't bother me. It's a print, you can't tell. And I've cut four pieces of that top part of the back because I'm going to uh, sort of self-line them thing so that they'll be more sturdy there. And that's how I'm gonna finish all the edges there. And then this is the facing for that V thing. And that facing is gonna catch that thing inside. 
and then I've cut random little strips uh, that I'm going to use at the top there to tie up the top. So I'm going to stitch that middle seam there on the back first, then I'm ironing out, <coughs> preparing these little straps that I need to do. Um, I just want to have those ready for when the moment comes where I have to attach them onto the back piece there. Uh, I prefer to uh, have all this pressed. So here I'm going to finish that top part there, it's double. You can see I've pinned that there and that's going to finish the neckline as well. So you can see that's how I've sewn that together. And then I had to unpick that corner because I forgot to put the straps in before sewing that. So I'm just quickly uh, putting that through that tiny little opening there, pinning it, and then I have to sew it. So uh, you can see there I've uh, pinned that back piece to the main part of my back um, of the blouse there. You can see it pinned right there. And then on top of that, I'm going to attach the facing. So this is our facing that's going to finish off that middle V part. So I'm putting right sides together and that um, special back piece there is going to be sandwiched between the facing and the back piece of the blouse. So I'm going to quickly sew that V. Um, I've pinned it really accurately. I take my time. I'm using a one centimeter seam allowance there. You can see how it's going to get finish, you know, how it's going to look when I'm done sewing. So I'm liking how this is looking because it's looking like I see it in my head, basically. So I'm going to sew that. When I get to that corner, I stop, I pivot. Uh, sometimes I do a bit of hand wheeling there to make it really accurate on that corner and then keep going. Then you know how you have to snip everything. And on that little uh, middle bit there on the V, I do quite a lot of snips. You can see there, lots of snips. Then I do my understitching to make sure that that facing is gonna stay inside. Um, take your time, I fast forward it here so it doesn't you know, turn out that long, but I am sewing slowly. Here I'm pressing it, you can see how it's gonna look on the inside, nicely finished with that facing inside. That V looks pretty nice, I'm happy with it. You can't really tell of that middle seam on the other side because of the busy print. So next I just do my bust starts there and then I have to attach on the facing. Um, you know how I do my bust starts already or any dart, start from the narrow bit towards the wide bit, uh, pin on that facing right sides together, sew it on, I use a one centimeter seam allowance to do that. And then as always, you snip, 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 all that little curve, turn around, under stitch. I haven't shown myself overlocking, but I, ha I am overlocking as I go. I'm overlocking the seams. So there I'm pressing that. And now I have to go and attach these two together, right sides together, and do the shoulder seams. So the shoulder seam here, I'm gonna do a close up. You can see it's got that dangly bit there of the facing of the front pattern piece that is gonna be dangling. And when I fold it under, it's gonna conceal that shoulder seam. So I'm gonna try and show you here. They have pressed it open, but actually I'm just gonna overlock it together and it's gonna look like that. So um, after doing that, I've tried it on myself and I've uh, pinned it closer to my body than what, you know, the pattern. Remember, this was a size bigger. Cool, so you can see I forget steps, you know. <laughs> I took all the time to press and sew those little ties that were gonna tie at the back. And then when I did that, that back piece on the top, I forgot to add them in. Then I had to, you know, unpick and put them in and sew again, you know. But that's real life sewing, you know, we all make mistakes. And I mean, I could have edited that out and just shown you everything correctly. But hey, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I thought I'd just show you how the events really transpired. Okay, so um, I really like it. It turned out really cropped because I only had a teeny tiny amount of fabric of this cotton that I bought in the market in Bolivia. And um, by miracles, I managed to get all the pattern pieces out. So it is slightly 
cr more cropped than what I would usually wear but you know slightly cropped I can have a slightly cropped thing in my wardrobe you know I'm not showing anything you know I'm not showing any skin around my midriff so oh, I love the back detail I'm definitely gonna make this back detail again on a dress or anything I mean you saw the process it's just you know my guesstimating thing that I do and um eyeballing you know I look at a picture and then I just sort of trace lines on the pattern and then add seam allowance right so the back detail there is really nice I really like it that little V there um, long ties I just think this turned out exactly like I wanted it to look how tiny it looks <laughs> it looks like a child's thing but you know anyway um, I have a little clip I'm inserting here of me prancing around and showing you the back detail because you can actually see the back detail when it's on me because you can see the skin through and form that shape at the back. So I am super, super happy with this. Now I'm going to show you the inside because when, when I was filming it, um, I don't know, I don't know if you could actually see what I did in the shoulders. So this is the front facing right there and you can see how I finished the armholes with bias tape but look at that shoulder there so basically I have hand stitched that on and folded it in so it's totally covering up that shoulder seam and the back was already finished there because I did that piece double so that neck doesn't have a facing because this whole piece is two layers you can see and then at the back you have that facing there so uh, pretty easy to construct once I got my head around the process and the steps um, you don't see that going on or, or else my video would be so long <laughs> but yeah I have a think while I go I stop I think how is this gonna go and then, and then just do it you know so I hope the process was nice and easy to see um, I think this could be replicated on anything, any pattern you have with a back. Most patterns have a back piece, don't they? <laughs> you can just do that on the back and make it really nice and special and totally different. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really happy with this make. Uh, go ahead and see some pictures. be like a really good base pattern for me like a like a good boxy top that I liked how the neck like turned out so I'm gonna leave that but that I can make changes to so I think this is a really good pattern to have and to try and make because it's really easy to get a good fit you know so um yeah that's all for now I'm really happy with this make um really really fresh and I'm gonna be bike riding on the with this on the next video is going to be all, my, all about my Turner dress from Cashmere Patterns, so be on the lookout for that. Um, if you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed watching all my shenanigans, uh, hit the thumbs button, like. <laughs> uh, you can also subscribe and share, and that is all. Have fun sewing, bye!